Alright, what's up, gang? I know this video is gonna come out a little bit late, but that's okay because it's an amazing Friday. Well, I guess now it's Saturday, but that doesn't matter because I just saw the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and it's fucking amazing. Now, this is going to be a no spoilers review, so if you have not seen the movie yet, you can totally watch this video because I'm not gonna reveal anything about the movie. I'm not even gonna show clips of it. But yeah, the movie is really, really good. And I wanna start by saying everything that it does right from a movie perspective, then from like a Five Nights at Freddy's fan perspective. So as a movie perspective, first off, the movie is shot great, okay? The editor in me is really happy with the way this movie looks. The color grading, like the colors on it, they pop. They're, the movie's very vibrant. It just looks really good. It's shot really well. There, you know, there's no like abrupt cuts. The only thing I did notice, and I think this was just like my theater, was um the audio mixing of the movie was like really off. Like it was really quiet and then really loud. Again, that was probably the fucked up speakers in the theater that I went to, but that's really the only thing I noticed. Now, the character design in the movie was great, okay? The animatronics in the movie look really, really good, and what surprised me was that obviously the way that they're moving, there's gotta be somebody in a suit because, you know, fucking spoiler, the animatronics move in the movie. But yeah, the animatronics, whenever they move, you obviously, like, you can't see that there's a person in it, so they must have gone in and, like, CGI cut the dude out that was inside the costume and then added like an exoskeleton interior to it and I know that must have been hell on earth to do so I just wanted to point that out because it, it looks great they move robotic but also like I don't know kiddish because as you guys know if you know the FNAF lore the animatronics are haunted by kids souls and they're able to you can almost like express by their movement that they're kids in the movie which is insane because it's just a fucking animatronic that's just robotically moving now the main character Mike um, has has an absolutely amazing storyline. Now, this movie is a retelling of the first FNAF game's lore, so not necessarily the super deep shit, like if you know the FNAF lore, then you know how deep it gets, but basically if you could extract all the lore that you get just out of the first game, that's basically what this movie is. And Mike's storyline, it's so much more than him just being like a security guard, and it's so good. It, it works so well, and they were able to tangle it all together in this really well-made movie. There's a child actor main character in the movie, and she's really, really good too. Um, she does a really good job at playing, like, kind of a confused child, but also, like, really intellectual. I don't know. That, you know that, that weird kid that kind of, like, sits in the corner and doesn't really talk to anybody, but they get, like, straight A's and they're not, like, gross, but, like, y you know, like, but they're always, like, drawing or talking about something really niche, but they, they got it figured out. That, that, they, like, set seven-year-old actor is able to play that really well. They really do a good job of making Mike feel like just a down-to-earth and, like, down-on-his-luck guy. I'm not gonna- I don't think that's really a spoiler. Like, if you know the FNAF lore, you kinda know a little bit of that, and that doesn't really spoil anything of the movie. They do a really good job at making you feel very connected to Mike, and he's very relatable, and again, his storyline is so good. You have to see this movie. Now, I wanna talk about a little bit of what this game does right from a FNAF fan perspective. Now, yes, there is a Corey Kenshin cameo in the movie. You already know this because it's in the trailer, so that's not spoiling anything, but there is one more YouTuber in the movie that I won't spoil for you, but it's really cool whenever you see him because you'll only notice he's there if you've, like, if you know FNAF and you've seen the dude's videos, which if you know FNAF, you've seen his videos. No, it's not Markiplier. I do have to say, Markiplier should have been in this movie. Markiplier had to have had the biggest gameplays on the Five Nights at Freddy's games, and it's a shame that he isn't in this movie. He should have been. Like, if I was Scott Cawthon, or whatever his name is, and I was making the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and wanted cameos from YouTubers, he would be the first person I would call, because he had to have been the most influential on the series. Anyways, what I was gonna say is, this movie does a really good job at telling the story in a very cohesive way. I've watched the, in you know the video that's like two hours long by that one guy that goes through the entire FNAF floor? I've probably watched that video three times since it came out, and it's so convoluted. The FNAF lore is so deep, it goes so far, and it's kind of hard to follow. Like, you, I, again, I've watched that whole video three times, and I still couldn't tell you that much of the lore. It's just so deep. But this movie does such a good job at simplifying it, but also telling it in a very good way. Like, it doesn't really cut anything out that doesn't need to be there, or cut any bulk out. Like, it, it does a great job 
job at telling the story from the perspective of somebody who has no idea of the FNAF lore. And that's what I respect most about this movie is it's not only an amazing movie for people who love FNAF and have been playing the games for years and fucking dressed up as fucking Foxy on like their like eight year old Halloween or whatever, but it also does an amazing job of, you know, telling the story to an entire new audience of people that know nothing about the FNAF lore. It's great. I guarantee you, you don't have to know jack shit. You don't have to know what Five Nights at Freddy's is, but if you have like two hours, you watch this movie, you're going to understand it and you're going to realize it's a great movie because this movie isn't just a good FNAF movie. It's a good movie movie. This is coming from a dude that watches or I guess watched a lot of Marvel. Okay, I don't, I don't really fuck with what they're doing now, but up until I guess semi recently, like two years ago, I was a, oh my fucking, I was a huge Marvel fan and I had watched, I think I've watched every single Marvel movie in the Infinity Saga timeline, knowing the new movies that come out, they're god awful. So I guess my opinion's kind of biased since those are the main movies I've been seeing, but this movie, it, it does so, so good. It does everything right. So here's the stuff that it does wrong. Now there's two minor things that this movie could have done a little bit better and they're they're pretty basic and they're honestly just nitpicks okay this movie's amazing but the first thing I want to say is there could have been a little bit more fan service I think this movie definitely feels like a Five Nights at Freddy's movie but it could have felt more like a celebration of the series if there was a little bit more fan service or if it talked about things that there's no way in hell anybody that wouldn't know FNAF would know like I, I was watching the movie and I kind of wanted them to say at some point the bite of 87 like in some sort of context just reference it in some way and they never did I really would have liked it if there was like a phone guy now there kind of is but it's not the same I wanted there to be like a phone guy on the first shift of the night guard but there wasn't just little things like that that only a FNAF fan would know and yes there's the youtuber cameos but that's about all there is for fan service now this obviously doesn't affect how it is as really even a FNAF movie but definitely doesn't affect how it is as a movie it's just something I would have expected there to be a little bit more of now the other concern I have which is even less minor there's a scene in the trailer where the main character is beating the shit out of a guy in like a water fountain and I was just mad because that scene had nothing basically nothing to do with the movie okay I don't I don't really think that's a spoiler but I thought that was gonna be like him going fucking crazy or something it wasn't it, it that I, I wanted that to be more impactful than it was and it wasn't and I was kind of disappointed but what I wasn't disappointed at was the entire lead up before this movie came out I was thinking okay the living tombstone song has to be the end credit song and I, I wanted it to be so bad I knew if it was the end credit song that it would significantly make this movie seem better even if it was a terrible movie after watching the hour and 50 minutes of a great movie I got topped off by calling it it was the living tombstone song was the end credit song that made me so happy I, I hope this movie review was I guess good it was non-spoiler and I've never done a movie review uh, so I hope it was good uh, if you did like this video there's not really anything you can go and watch because I've never made a movie review but you should go check out my other videos because they're great but whether you do that or not I appreciate you for watching this one all the way through so thank you